Hello there. Today is an appearance of the very, very low cut turtleneck because it's like 102 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is not super fun for my usual outfit. With the World Barista Championship coming up in pretty much exactly two months, which is both terrifying and also very exciting, over the next eight weeks, we're gonna be talking a lot more about what coffee tastes like, and I'm gonna be doing my best to describe exactly what I'm tasting and what the judges are gonna be tasting on the world stage. Kind of a side note here, when you think about food and or food content and or chef's describing food, they have arguably a little bit of an easier time doing it than coffee professionals do. Most times when you see a dish made and presented to you, you will have some reference for what those ingredients in the dish taste like. Similarly, you're able to visually look at the dish, you're able to kind of dissect it, and you're able to kind of anticipate or expect what the person behind the camera tasting the dish is tasting, and you'll be able to compare it to experiences that you've had previously tasting those ingredients. Coffee is a little bit trickier. <laughs> it's a fun challenge, but definitely in a visual medium, coffee is a little less interesting to look at because no matter how you combine it, usually you end up with a brown liquid of some sort. <laughs> Occasionally it's a slightly lighter brown if you've added milk or cream to it, but generally it is in, in the spectrum of a brown liquid. That being said, coffee has a huge, massive spectrum of taste and it's really, really fun to be able to find those things once you've kind of trained yourself to look for flavors in coffee. So today we're going to talk about tasting coffee. We're going to set up a cupping today. We'll talk a little bit about how to do that, but I specifically want to talk about how I have kind of trained myself to taste coffee and how you can do it at home. This is also uh, really important right now because as most of you know, I had COVID a couple weeks ago. I lost pretty much entirely my sense of taste and smell. And while it is coming back slowly, I am actively having to retrain my taste buds essentially. So this is going to be a fun activity for both of us. And I think we should just get started. We're going to be doing kind of a small cupping here today. We don't need a huge variety of coffees. I do want to have several different ones, so we'll be able to do a couple different examples here. So just as far as things that I have in front of me, we of course have cupping bowls. These are 250 milliliter cupping bowls. You are able to use um, cups or variety of things. These are specifically made for cupping coffee though. Very cool. In them, I have my coffee already portioned out. I have not ground it yet, but I have everything set up. Inside is about 13 grams of coffee. I believe the SCA standard uh, for cupping protocol is to use about 8.25 grams of coffee for every 150 milliliters of water that you're having. So we have 250 milliliters of water and in that range, we're using about 13 grams of coffee here. Now, I additionally have cupping spoons right here. These are very fun. This is a very, very deep bowl spoon that I'll be using to grab the coffee, to slurp the coffee, and also to kind of skim off the top of the coffee after it's done steeping, which I will explain very soon. Now you can use regular spoons if you would so like, like soup spoons or whatnot. It is helpful to have a larger spoon for sure. Now I have an extra cup right here with water. This is gonna be for rinsing our spoons in between coffees. I have a kettle here. This is temperature controlled. I have lots of water in here. So we're gonna be bringing this up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 93 degrees Celsius. Then I also, have some paper and pens and a, and a timer over here. <laughs> you can use the timer on your phone if you like. I have a separate one. Now, when tasting or cupping, either one, I do recommend having some sort of sheet of paper with you for taking notes. Now, the SCA does release like official cupping sheets that they use for grading coffees. We're not using that today. They are a little bit more advanced than I think we need. So we're gonna be using uh, cupping sheets actually from Casey Makes Coffee. We've used these, I think it was actually a year ago, back during some of the like really large coffee taste tests we've done. But this is kind of generally what they look like. On it, you have a place to evaluate uh, the smell of the coffee, you can evaluate the taste of the coffee, and leave general notes. And that's about all we need here. I also prefer to have, and you'll understand why here soon, a plethora of colored pens or pencils of some sort. Not necessary, but color is really important, I think, to how we taste coffee. So if you would like to add these on, highly recommend. Okay, well, I need to go grind our coffees uh, and get these started steeping. So in the meantime, while I do this, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video. I want to give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. With Trade, you can find new coffees from roasters all over the US. With a simple quiz, Trade will find coffees that fit your exact needs and ship them to you straight from the roastery. You can also choose the frequency you want your coffee to arrive at, so you'll never run out and you'll always have the freshest roasts. Now, after I filled out their quiz, one of the coffees that Trade recommended to me this time was a single origin from Ethiopia, roasted by Metric Coffee. And while I brew this beautiful coffee with notes of grape soda and wild 
wildflower honey, I should also let you know that Trade's team taste tests thousands of coffees in order to keep their active selection as fresh and as relevant to your needs as possible. You can also see some of my favorite coffees when you go to my custom landing page at the link below. Now, if all of this doesn't convince you, then let me also tell you that right now Trade is offering my viewers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping. When you go to drinktrade.com MDC or click the link in the description, this offer won't last forever, so get started while you can. Oh, and P.S. All the coffees that we're going to be cupping today are also from Trade. Thank you again and go to the link in the description to learn more. We now have all of our coffee ground. These are ground slightly coarser than you would for like a standard drip coffee maker. On the bottom of all of these cups, I have little pieces of paper that are marked with which coffees these are. So even though the cups themselves aren't marked, we can tell which coffees are which. Now right here, we have our coffee from Novo. This one is going to be a single origin washed coffee from Rwanda. In the middle here, we have our coffee from Dune. This is a single origin honey processed coffee from Honduras. And last of all, we have a washed coffee from Ecuador from Equator here on the end. Cupping procedures are pretty standard across the industry. Most coffee content creators and or educators or professionals have probably talked about it or run through the procedure at some point. So we're going to go over that section pretty quickly because I want to start talking about tasting as soon as possible because that's really, that's where it gets really fun. So we have our water almost up to temp. Again, it's at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and or 93 degrees Celsius. We're going to take in some dry fragrance here. Once our water is ready, we will pour it on top, start our timer, and the steeping will begin. Very exciting. <laughs> now of note on most uh, cupping sheets or when people are talking about tasting coffee, you'll probably see two different words when it comes to your sense of smell. You'll see the word fragrance and you'll also see the word aroma. They are different. Uh, fragrance refers, fragrance, <laughs> it's hard to say. Fragrance refers to to when the coffee is dry. So at this point, we just have dry ground coffee in here. What we are smelling is the fragrance of the coffee. I usually recommend just to give a little bit of agitation, kind of like smack it against your hand a little bit. Bring your nose really nice and close. Like you're gonna, you're gonna be getting kind of intimate with your coffee <laughs> during this process. And I like to just make a pass and just kind of smell things off the front. I'm not making any notes. I'm not really even thinking about it. I am just taking in, for lack of a better word, the vibe of the coffee as it exists currently. If you're inhaling grounds, you're, you're doing it right. Our last one. Now at this point, now that I've taken them all in, I will probably go back in and smell them one more time, thinking a little bit more analytically about what I'm smelling. There's no need to rush this process. You haven't added any water yet. So take your time and really just think about things as you go. Cupping is not a race, unless it is. In which case, that is not something I've ever been involved with before. Usually with fragrance, um, I don't pull really, really specific notes. I like to just kind of give a general descriptor. So this one smells on the darker side of flavor. So things like chocolate or even like plum or like a stewed fruit is what I'm getting. So on my little cupping sheet under fragrance, I'm gonna write those words down. The center one is definitely on the lighter side. This definitely has a bit more kind of hint of citrus in it. And I would maybe even describe it as being delicate in the fragrance. And again, in cupping, in tasting, there are no wrong tasting notes. This is all pretty subjective as to what you are experiencing because your taste and smell experiences and history of those things are different than mine. And that will translate into how you experience coffee. This last one doesn't have a ton of fragrance to it. Um, not nearly as strong as these two. If anything, I would describe this one as being kind of on the lighter end of the spectrum. I am not able to pull anything super distinct out of it. So we're just gonna write lighter, didn't get much fragrance. That's totally fine. Okay, now that we have experienced our fragrance, uh, time to add water. You will also wanna start your timer. We're gonna be watching for four minutes before we break the crust. So just start pouring and then watch for four minutes. Now you could weigh your water if you like. However, I know that these bowls are specifically 250 milliliters. So I have opted not to weigh my water. I'm just filling it up to the very top. Just a side note in case anyone was curious. While this is steeping, I'm gonna bring my nose very, very close to this and just start to get a little bit of that initial aroma. I will probably not write anything down during this period. This is more just kind of continuing to enhance my, my expectations for the vibe <laughs> of these different coffees. Oh, also be careful uh, not to dunk the tip of your nose in this. At this point, this water is very, very hot. I've done that before. It's very painful. Do not recommend. 
The good news is everything smells like coffee, which is awesome. I say that specifically because if you smell a cup that smells really funky, whether it smells like raw potato or like popcorn or like just something that's very, very unexpected, that might be an indicator that there is some sort of defect in the coffee. So just be aware of that. If it doesn't smell like coffee, which is a thing that can happen, uh, you might wanna pull that bowl aside and start a new one. We're at two minutes. And at this point, you can also note on the top of all of these bowls, you're starting to see what is literally a crust forming right here, a pretty solid looking crust of grounds. This is essentially holding in a lot of the aroma of the coffee. So when we refer to breaking the crust during cupping, which we'll do very, very soon, that is literally pushing through and breaking this upper crust of coffee that is like solidifying on top of our cupping bowls. This is also a very good time to decide uh, which spoon you would like to use. I am partial to the rainbow one. <laughs> Adds a little spice to the to the all black getup. Generally in the steeping time, you'll see kind of a range of recommended time being between three to five minutes. I pretty consistently like to do four. Just it's right in the middle, it's nice and even. I find that's a pretty happy spot for most coffees. And if we remember correctly, we poured this coffee first. So we're gonna break the crust of this coffee first. That's four minutes. We're gonna start breaking the crust, taking in the aroma, but we are gonna leave this timer running. So don't stop this. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be pushing through kind of aggressively a few times with the back of our spoon through this crust while also following it with our nose. So the action we're gonna be doing is kind of like this a little bit. I feel like I'm doing the worm. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get started. In between, rinse your spoon. And we had spillage. I knew these two were too good to be true. There is no judgment on this channel. Spillage is entirely all right, just so long as you clean it up when you're done. And my favorite trick is if you just turn the cup around, generally the spill goes away. Once more, I'm gonna go over the top of these and now smell what is the aroma because this coffee is wet and it is no longer fragrance, it's aroma. Very exciting. If you have any additional notes at this point, it's a good time to write them down on your little score sheets or evaluation sheets. Now what we're gonna do is you'll note that we have all these little bubbles and this kind of film on top of our cupping bowls. You want to remove that before we taste it. We don't necessarily want to drink this. So we're gonna be skimming the top of our coffees. This is how you do it. I would argue that this is probably one of the most difficult parts of cupping. So you're gonna need two spoons, preferably large cupping spoons. You're gonna essentially drag them along the surface of your coffee and kind of collect all of that muck into your spoons. Preferably doing your best not to take very much coffee out of it. Rinse in between. And our last one. Start at the outer edge, do a full circle around, hold it for a second, and then lift. Usually I find I need to do like two passes per cup and rinse. I'm just gonna get rid of this. This is kind of icky water. We don't wanna rinse in this water. So our timer now says nine minutes. This is nine minutes since we first started the infusion of the water into the ground coffee. Nine minutes is pretty much a happy zone of your coffee now being cool enough to pretty comfortably drink. Usually I would say between nine and 10 minutes, 10 minutes if you would like something a bit cooler, a bit softer on your palate, um, but nine is a good zone. So time to start tasting. At this point, you can stop your timer if you would like. So this is the fun part where we start talking about what flavors we're tasting. But first of all, we have to talk about how to taste. So what we're gonna do next is pretty uh, affectionately called slurping your coffee. <laughs> this is a very uh, socially acceptable thing to do at a cupping table. In fact, it is encouraged. And generally, this is not that important. This is more of like a kind of a bravado thing, but uh, the louder your slurp is, um, the more impressive it is. It's very silly. You do not need to have a loud slurp. You don't even really need to slurp if you don't want to, but you'll see people slurping very loudly. You'll hear whistles. You'll, you'll hear all sorts of things. Things, that's kind of part of the fun of it. So what I recommend you do, you take your large spoon, you dip it into the surface, gather some coffee. You don't need a ton because remember, we're gonna kind of be forcing this into our mouth. If you have too much coffee, you might be a little bit more liable to cough and or put it down the wrong pipe or something that's not super ideal. So let me just show. 
very yummy. <laughs> so essentially, what I just did was spray the coffee all over the palate in my mouth. How I think I can best describe that is that I am pulling the coffee, at least how I think about it, is pulling it through the middle of my two front teeth, which is kind of dispersing it. If you think of like a garden nozzle or spray, you think of it like misting out uh, in multiple directions. That's what I'm doing by pulling it through my front two teeth. And then I kind of use my tongue as like a little bit of like a guide, like I kind of curve my tongue to kind of collect everything. It sounds so gross <laughs> when you describe it, but let me do it one more time. A little bit of coffee, up, and then very quickly through the two front teeth. At that point, I kind of spray it everywhere, I collect it, and then I'm able to sit with it for a little bit. Just for good luck's sake, we'll do the last one. I will also note something you can do if you are prone to over-caffeination, or if you are doing a very, very large cupping, is you can also get a spit cup. This is totally fine and very normal. So once you collect that coffee, after you have kind of tasted it in your mouth, you can spit it off to the side. So you don't risk like just being super hyper on the cupping table. Okay, so that's technically on a very like physical side, how you taste, but let's talk about mentally how you taste. So we have three coffees in front of us and there's a lot that we wanna look for in these coffees. When you're tasting coffees, generally what you're looking for, most generally is gonna be tasting notes. Those are gonna be descriptors of the flavors in the coffee. Generally those will be things like different kinds of fruits or maybe different kinds of percentages of chocolates or berries or vegetal things or there, there's a whole range pretty much the world is your oyster <laughs> when it comes to your coffee flavors on top of that you're going to be looking for tactile descriptors those are things like what does the coffee feel like in the mouth is it a very heavy coffee is it more tea like is it a coffee that is very silky is it very juicy there's a, a whole range of those as well and on top of that you're also looking for is this coffee sweet is this coffee more on the bitter side is it more acidic like what's the balance of the coffee that can be super super overwhelming to dive into and try to figure all of those out in one go and or one slurp so this is where i start when i'm looking at a cupping table grab my spoon go to my first coffee I taste I don't think about what it tastes like. I don't think about what it feels like. What I do think about is what color is the coffee. I find associating a color or like a feeling with a coffee is a really, really nice way to begin narrowing down those funnels of just immense descriptors that you could pick from. So this coffee, for example, I taste it and I think this coffee tastes like an orange coffee, like the color of orange. And so without thinking about anything else, I write that down. This is where your multicolored pens come in very handy. Unfortunately, I don't have the color orange. So I'm gonna use like a red and a lighter color and I'm gonna make note that it's an orange coffee. Or you can look out and your red looks like orange on paper. This is a green coffee. This is definitely green. I would say this coffee tastes like a light brown, kind of like a like a caramel color, like a medium caramel color. Now that I've decided what colors these coffees taste like, now I'm gonna go on a second pass through all of them. But specifically on this pass, I'm gonna be thinking about the texture and the mouthfeel of the coffee. Again, we're not looking for specific notes just yet. I don't wanna really pull out things like strawberry or blueberry or chocolate just yet. I wanna think about, is this coffee a heavy coffee? Is it a light coffee? Is it a little bit grainier? Is it is it a juicy coffee? Is it jammy? Like, what is the texture of this coffee? If you'll notice, we are doing this in stages. We're just focusing on one question at a time. This coffee is a little bit dry. I would say it has a medium body. So I'm gonna write that down. This one is far juicier. It's also on the lighter side in terms of body. This is not quite tea-like. It's, it's definitely a little bit more substantial than this, but it has a light body and it's very juicy. And finally, this one is definitely on the heavier side. I'd also describe the kind of feeling of it in my mouth as being a little bit tangy. So now we have two major sections already knocked out, which is really gonna help us dive down into those really specific tasting notes. So now let's go back to this first coffee with the context that in the mouth, this first coffee tastes a little bit dry. It has a medium body, especially in our aroma. I was getting a bit of like jamminess, like it wasn't like fresh fruit. It was definitely like kind of like a stewed, like almost sweet, like cooked down fruit. Let's go back, see if we can pull any exact flavors out of that. Now what I get in the cup, kind of from that dry sweetness, tastes a little bit like vanilla to me. So I'm gonna write down vanilla because that's just the first thing that came to mind. 
I also think this tastes a lot, kind of like a stewed orange or like orange jam. Again, if you'll remember, I described this as tasting like an orange color. Now that was kind of lucky. <laughs> I don't always find the flavor of orange in coffees that I think tastes like the color orange, if that makes sense. But in this case specifically, this really does taste like orange jam. Uh, it's very, very pleasant. Um, there's a bit of vanilla as well. I would kind of describe it as being like an orange cream soda. So I'm gonna write that down as well. And I think those descriptors, those actual flavors fit in pretty well with our description of jammy fragrances and aromas, as well as kind of being a drier coffee and having a medium body. I think all of that fits together very nicely. So on to our second. Well, remember, this is a coffee that I described as tasting like the color green. This was a juicy coffee. This had a light body. Overall in our fragrance and aroma, we were getting things that were pretty light in color. Uh, we were getting citrus notes and also it was pretty delicate. I think the main thing I would get out of this, thinking through all those things as well as what I'm tasting, would probably be some sort of apple flavor. I think it's kind of like a, maybe a little bit of like an underripe, like red apple. So it's not necessarily a green, but it is that very fresh fruit forward. You can taste a little bit of the underripeness where it's a little bit like bitey still. It's not a super sweet coffee. So we'll write down apple. I will also write down unripe. Now that is very specific. You don't need to get that specific with your tasting notes, especially starting off, but if I'm just thinking through uh, what's coming to my brain, unripe is a word I would use as well. And lastly, we have a coffee that I described as the color of kind of a light caramel brown. Earlier, we got fragrances that were kind of more in the plum and chocolate and like darker zone. We also described this as having a pretty heavy body and being a little bit tangy in the mouth. Now, what could that all equate to? <laughs> I would definitely say this tastes like, like a caramel or like a brown sugar, something that's a little bit more cooked down and a darker sweetness than maybe a cane sugar or a sugar cane. So I'll write those things down. Remember, more information rather than less is always better. On top of that, I think there is a little bit of fruit on the finish of this coffee. The beginning of it tastes pretty dark. It's like a heavier flavor, but the end is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna try one more time and see if we can find that fruit. I wouldn't describe it as plum, like I was getting on the nose. I might put it more in like the fresh grape territory, like biting into like a green grape is what I would say. Well, that was a lot of tasting, but we did come up with tasting notes for all of these. And I'm very curious to see how they line up with the tasting notes that are put on the bags of these coffees. So let's just take a peek just for curiosity's sake. I will, however, say one more time that tasting is very subjective. There are ways that folks calibrate to one another to taste in a more objective way. But when you are tasting on your own, there's, there's not a wrong flavor. Again, taste is something that we all experience based on past memories, based on our strengths of our senses, like I don't smell super well and that does impact my taste overall. But that's all to say, there is no wrong way to necessarily do this, but hopefully the way I've done it and described it can be helpful for some of you in your tasting journeys. Tasting can be like super intimidating. I remember walking up to a cupping table with other coffee professionals for like the first time and I think I just tried like a natural coffee. Like it was a, it was a very distinct like fruity, like strawberry forward coffee. And someone was like, what do you taste? And in my mind, even though I said strawberry and I should have just said that, the insecurity of being like, like, what if I've tasted the wrong thing? Or what if I'm not tasting what this other person has tasted was pretty overpowering. And I don't want that experience to pass on to other people. Like you should say what you taste, <laughs> be very confident with it because you are correct because that's what you're tasting. Anyways, we have our first coffee. This coffee is from Equator. We described this coffee as tasting orange. The coffee was dry. It had a medium body and it had notes of vanilla, orange jam, and kind of an overall orange creamsicle. What they have said <laughs> on this bag, this is a single origin from Ecuador. If we remember, it's a washed coffee. This coffee, I feel really good about this. <laughs> the first note on this coffee is orange marmalade. That's pretty close. <laughs> Additionally, we have roasted almond, which I feel like could be taken from my vanilla note. And we also have oolong tea. Overall, as far as getting that initial orange, like jammy flavor, feeling pretty good. Next off, we have our coffee from Dune. This was described as a green coffee. It was juicy, it had a light body, and I got unripe apple as the main flavor flavor in this coffee. Unripe is not a bad descriptor, by the way. It's a very delicious coffee, but unripe in kind of its tartness. As far as what they said, their first note is persimmon, which is a fruit. You also have apple, which is very exciting. Uh, they did not narrow it down to an unripe. They didn't give it a qualifier of like a green or a red apple, but apple is in there. You also have caramel, which I could totally see. We got one of them, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. And then lastly, we have our coffee from Novo. 
This was a light brown colored coffee, as how I described it. It was a heavy body. It was a little bit tangy. I said it had notes of caramel, maybe brown sugar, and also green grape in there. As far as what they said, caramel. Yep, that was that was pretty clear, both in the aroma and also in the flavor. They said it had kumquat, and they said white grape. <laughs> so we're on different colors uh, of the grape spectrum of flavor, but we both landed in the grape area, which I think is pretty good. Anyways, I hope this was fun for some of you to get a little bit of the inside working of how I like to taste coffee. And I hope this was also helpful. Again, my goal for you leaving this video is for you to feel empowered in how you taste and to feel confident about saying what you taste. And I think getting a good formula for how you go through this procedure is really important. So then when you're at a cupping table or if you're just tasting coffee at home, you aren't kind of frantically trying to take in all sorts of information at once. It's very much a step-by-step -step process. Again, to review what I do, I go through, I look for a color. First of all, not anything else, but a simple color. Second pass, I look specifically for tactile and texture. What does the coffee feel like? What is the coffee's mouth feel? Last of all, that's when I get a little bit specific. I think about the color, I think about the tactile, and then I go in looking for flavors that kind of synchronize everything all together. Just write it all down and then you see what you get, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I will detail more about my experience tasting as well as other resources and videos I think are super helpful. Down below, I will also include a link to Casey's cupping sheets. Uh, they are gracious enough to offer these for free on their website. So if you would like to download them and use them yourself, you are totally able to do that. But besides that, I hope you all had a good time today. I had a really great time doing this and I hope you all learned a little something. <laughs> Happy tasting because we're gonna be talking a lot about tasting in the upcoming couple of weeks leading to WBC. Very scary, very exciting. I'm Morgan Juice Coffee, pretty much everywhere you will find me online. I'm here on YouTube once a week, uh, plus shorts. You'll also find me on Instagram and TikTok almost every single day. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Goodbye everyone.